you know about gas. You know, it combusts in the engine, it makes the boom boom to get your car movement. But is there really such a thing as better gas? Better gas! First, a little review. What the heck's in gasoline? It's not just one thing. Think of it like a soup. But instead of onions and vegetables and spices, we got different hydrocarbons. You might know that diesel's got a lot of boom per unit because of its long hydrocarbon chain. But it's also a part of what makes it combust under heat and pressure instead of by a spark. Gasoline is made up of hydrocarbons that are shorter chains and sometimes aromatic, like this 3-ethyltoluene. Typical gasoline contains about 150 different chemicals including benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. The particular makeup of gasoline is what lends to its utility. It's readily vaporized and resistant to pre-ignition. Again, there's so many chemicals in gasoline, and there's so many different formulations of gasoline that I can't sit here and tell you exactly what's in it. But I can tell you the types of things that are in it and why they're in it. Gasoline mixes with air, is rapidly oxidized in the combustion chamber thanks to a spark, and is expelled as water and carbon dioxide. In a perfect system, that's all you get. But your engine's not perfect. The repeated combustion can cause carbon buildup and engine wear. So what a better gas will do is maximize combustion, minimize wear, and decrease any contaminant buildup in the engine. So we went to the Shell Technology Center in Houston, Texas to see the lengths their scientists go to make sure your car is running on the best fuel possible. So they walked us through these engines that they'd taken apart. It lets you see just how well a particular formulation of gasoline or oil can help an engine run optimally. Here's two valves from an engine. The one from an engine running on gas with the lowest additive content allowed has a thick brown film on it. The Shell team of scientists have a really technical name for it gunk. On the valve that wasn't running premium gasoline, some of that gasoline might have sat on the valve. And then when the engine was warm, and it didn't burn, it just sat. And while it sat, it turned into a varnish. And then it got heated, and then it happened again, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, until gunk. These are carbon deposits that form when you have low quality fuel. The idea is the Shell V Power Nitro Plus uh, premium gasoline would actually uh, help clean those deposits, but it will also prevent them from forming. If you have a car that already had deposits in there, you use it, start using Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gasoline, it will remove up to 60% of those deposits with the very first tank. So you see how this one doesn't burn? because it's clean, but the one that has the deposits in it is burning for longer because some of that is being held on the valve. And you may say, well, how much is that? And is it really significant? These engines are really tuned up to work with the precise amount of fuel. So if you have any fuel held up on the valves, it's really going to upset that combustion process. A valve that looks like that's bad for a few reasons. One, it could restrict airflow to the engine. Worse yet, it could stick and not open up when it should. It could stick because it's sticky. Get it? Come on. If you look at the outcome from a 5,000 mile test where you run the engine from scratch, from clean, right? Clean valves. And the Shelby Power Nitro Plus side hardly, you know, has anything on it. Low quality gasoline, about 921 milligrams of deposits. A good formulation would not only burn off so it wouldn't clog the valves, but it'd have elements to help get the existing gunk off of an engine. So better gasoline has more of the chemicals that will not only reduce deposits, but eliminate them. These additives are a little more costly, and that is part of the reason that gasoline formulations with better performance and more additives tend to cost more at the pump. So let's do a quick refresher on octane ratings. The numbers on the pump aren't a measurement of components in the gas. They're a measurement of how good that particular formulation is at resisting pre-ignition compared to octane. Different countries use different rating systems, but overall, those numbers rate the gasoline on how well it resists pre-ignition in your engine. Higher performance engines have more precise ignition time and often have much higher compression ratios in those engines. In these engines, it's crucial 
that they run on gasoline with a higher octane rating. I'm not saying high octane gas because that implies the gasoline is high in octane, which may or may not be the case because of all the chemicals in gas. Higher octane rating, not necessarily higher octane gas. Love you. Semantics. Semantics! Scientists also have to take into consideration the heat of the combustion and the byproducts produced by that combustion. If a particular mix of gasoline ignites at too low a temperature, you get knocking or pinging because it's igniting before it should. If the particular mix of gasoline isn't formulated correctly, if it's bad gas, it can still leave deposits in the combustion chamber. These can wear out pistons and even lead to pre-ignition by not letting the chamber get rid of heat the way it was designed. A mix of gasoline for high performance engines in California is gonna look a little different than the mix that's optimal for the same engine in Norway. Shell fuel formulations start in Hamburg, developed hand in hand with their work with Scuderia, Ferrari, and Marinello. They can put in a request to the blend lab. Then they get to test that mix out to see how it performs. How well does it clean? How effective is it at preventing wear? But how can you tell how lubricants and fuel affect the insides of an engine. You take apart the engine! Every one of our technicians are, are trained. They're trained to, to grade them, kind of like the industry standard. So they grade them on cleanliness, they weigh them on wear, and you can see that there is hardly any scuffing in, in the journal bearings and so forth. And so we want to understand that. So you want two things, a good gasoline, doing its job and generating as little wear and buildup as possible, and an oil lubricating the piston on its journey right at the edge of the ring, they might come into contact. The piston is where there's a chance that the oil lubricating the engine can come into contact with the gasoline combustion in the chamber. The, the lubricant actually cannot get to the top part of the piston ring. So the top piston ring is usually start of oil, and that's where the fuel that contains uh, an anti-wear component can actually play its role. So by protecting that top piston ring, that's, that's really what we talk about. Everything else below that is the lubricant's job. It's also why they spend so much time formulating their oils. This is a piston ring that they magnified. And then 3D printed. The side that's depressed in the model is where that wear happened. If it goes any further, you're gonna lose compression. And that dang old engine won't work the way it's supposed to. That is why it's important to use the right gasoline and the right engine oil. We make it from the beginning basic block, the single carbon, and build it up that way. Now we can make it to up to 99.9% .9 pure product. Very homogenous, just like slipping on, a, on ball bearings. It's those cold mornings uh, for those guys who work up in uh, Portland or in Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, it's coming around the bend, right? The winter is coming around and you're trying to start the car. So if your oil pump is pushing those little tight oil passages, it's trying to push this engine at 40 below, this is what happens between a good product and a slow product. And those differences, those seconds of differences is what's gonna help to protect that engine when you crank that engine 100,000 times a year. So we opened engines and we looked at valves. I mean, is there such a thing as better gasoline? I'll answer it this way. There's such a thing as bad gasoline. We saw in the center that some commonly used low quality deposit control additives can accumulate on intake valve stems and cause them to stick, while others cause additional combustion chamber deposits. So good companies who care about their product in your car are doing tests to make sure that their gasoline's as good as it can be. The differences between us and our competitor is the way, the methodology that we developed, right, along the way. The 75 years of Shell's history, developing specific methodologies to understand that engine a little bit better than the competitor. And that's what differentiates us from our competitor. Hit this little yellow button to subscribe. You can also click that little bell. It gives you alerts whenever there's new stuff. One of our first videos we ever did was on gas. You know it's probably got plenty of engine deposits? Communist cars! Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me, at Bids Bardo. We've got a bunch of apparel. Check out shop.donut.media. Don't tell my wife I did a whole episode on gasoline and didn't blow anything up.